Okay. Good morning, everyone. Let me just close this up. Okay. Well, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the HETS Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our 2022 Best Practices Showcase, celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Inmari Santiago, and I will be introducing the speakers for the breakout sessions in this room. Before we, be we begin, we request your support with the following. Please change your mobile phone to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded. And for those online, please remain muted just in case to avoid feedback. This presentation will be in English and you can enable the subtitles. Uh, we will have time for questions at the end of the presentation. And finally, we invite you to see the QR code that the staff will share to all participants to complete the electronic evalu evaluation form for this session before you leave this room. The virtual participants, the links will, uh, to the evaluation will be available in the chat. I'll make sure to put a, a few times. Please make sure to select the time and date for this session. Your feedback is recommended and it's very important to heads. Now we are ready to start. The title of this presentation is Expanding Global Learning Opportunities Through an Online Global Classroom. And uh, please welcome our speakers, Dr. Martha J. Asselin, Dr. Annette Ricci, and Dr. Dominic Hammer from the University at Albany. The and I'll let you guys go. Well, thank you. We're going to go ahead, Annette. Annette, you're going to start. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I think we go to the next slide and we'll introduce ourselves briefly if we can. Um, thank you, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Um, and, and thank you, Martha, for organizing Dominique and I to be here as well. Um, it's really exciting to be at a bilingual conference. It's been a few years <laughs> since I've done that. And, um, my name is Annette Ritchie, and I am an international officer at the University at Albany. Uh, my main responsibilities there are leading um, four global and intercultural learning initiatives. One is COIL. Um, hopefully some of you have heard of that before, Collaborative Online International Learning. And that mostly relates to what we'll be talking about today. Um, and I also lead a, a minor, the International Studies minor, a Peace Corps prep certificate, and the Global Distinction Transcript Milestone. So each of these programs sound different, but they're all aimed at expanding um, access to global career readiness across the disciplines and um, inclusive student excellence, which I think everyone here is about that as well. I am um, fortunate to be the product myself of global and intercultural learning. I grew up as what you call a third culture kid. And this means um, people who grew up in various nations that aren't the ones who issued their passport. And so the result is that our identities are a bit of a mix and they stem from um, very positive connections to people and experiences like this one here, um, rather being tied to nation and place. Um, and as I said, I'm thrilled to be here today among friends and to learn from everyone here. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Martha. Terrific. Hi everyone, we're so grateful to have you with us today. I'm Dr. Martha Aslin, and I have the pleasure of serving as the director for the Center for Leadership and Service at the University at Albany. The University at Albany is a HETS organization, and we're excited to tell our story. Um, through Annette Ritchie and the great work that she does, she introduced me to this amazing human being, Dominique Kammer, who's with us today. And we've been able to, because of COVID, deliver what I, my mission is, and you're gonna be hearing about the mission from the Center for Leadership and Service in a new way to our students. Um, and in a way that has become more popular, Dominique doesn't even know, but for this class that we're offering this upcoming semester, I already have 42 people signed up for the class when originally we went for like 20, 30, try it out. Um, it has become a very popular course. And so we're so delighted to tell you all about this experience and about the course. Um, I'm gonna have Dominique introduce himself next. Thank you very much, Annette and Martha. My name is Dominic. 
I'm uh, from Munich, Germany, um, sitting here next to the Austrian border in the very southern part of, of Germany. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that I had the opportunity for now two semesters to, um, to do that course together with Martha and with, the, um, um, with uh, all that support that I received from our institutions, mainly also from, from U Albany with uh, Annette and, and her team. Um, Molly, I'm Professor of International Management at the Department of Business Administration of the second largest business school in Germany, that's Munich University of Applied Sciences in Munich. Um, and I'm serving also as a Vice Dean International, which um, somehow gives me the opportunity to seek for some possibilities to cooperate internationally. And this is what we would like to, to, um, to, to tell you today, how we, how we set it up and how we made it um, during the last two semesters. And you had 40, 42 students signed up for the next course, Martha. Yes. So I bring another 35, <laughs> which exists. It's expanding, it's growing. Number. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'll, I'll get us started and then I'll turn it over to Martha and Dominique again. Um, we wanted to first share with you a little history of how the program came to be, of which we're a part. And so we start with making the inquiry um, and the partnerships of which Martha and Dominique are a part. So for over a decade, um, German Universities of Applied Sciences 7, which I'll refer to as UAS 7 from now on, um, and the State University of New York, SUNY, they have cultivated a valued yep. university consortium to consortium partnership. Now it had largely been centered on student mobility, which is typical, um, and UAS7's rather unique um, hybrid study internship program versus ever looking into transatlantic, transatlantic teaching collaborations. So I briefly managed the SUNY side um, of the student exchange when it was housed at the university at Albany. Um, I should mention too that the SUNY system is a consortium of 64, not seven <laughs> universities. So um, we, we were always working together creatively in that way. So UAS7 and SUNY were always looking for ways to work together more closely, um, more expansively, strategically, and sustainably, um, especially in research and to more fully involve um, faculty and classrooms, as I said, not, not just the student exchange. All right, so then we move to the folks we see in the middle of our slide. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, the internationalization through digitization division of the DAAD, which is the German Academic Exchange Service, was already working on a huge grant initiative called IVAC or International Virtual Academic Collaboration. And then they launched it very quickly, right when it was needed, right? In mid 2020, when mobility was suspended. So the goals of the IVAC program um, now in its second year um, are our goals as well. Um, and goals- No, no, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> are the goals of most virtual exchange programs in most universities. And these include um, integrating international virtual collaboration across the curriculum, um, improving student access to global experiences, um, enhancing students' digital and intercultural skills, and forging a network um, and community of practice, of which Martha and Dominique are a part. So I think we're ready for the next slide, please. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk a bit about how the academy was created and how we built this community of practice of faculty and then students. Um, UAS 7 North America Executive Director, Dr. Patricia Nove, who is my dear colleague, immediately approached me regarding a possible UAS 7 SUNY application. I had often spoke of COIL, Collaborative Online International Learning, which is SUNY's flagship approach to virtual exchange. And so she thought of SUNY first. <laughs> so, so you never know when something will come to fruition. And we were so fortunate and grateful to have won. 
And so the inaugural UAS 7 Virtual Academy was born and we all set off to work. Now, eight virtual exchange projects or classroom interventions among professors from four UAS 7 and three SUNY universities were proposed in 2020 and then carried out successfully in 2021. Most collaborations were sparked by a UAS 7 professor interest. Only two faculty pairs or trios, we actually had two <laughs> were initiated from the SUNY side, including today's presenters who are from Munich UAS and University at Albany. Now the online professional development for the 18 professors was provided by the SUNY COIL Center um, who customized for the UAS 7 Virtual Academy. Um, after the kickoff celebration and training in December 2020, we welcomed about 80 attendees, including all of the faculty, as well as instructional designers, international officers, and dignitaries from UAS 7, SUNY, and DAAD, the funding agency. We gathered on Zoom to break the ice ourselves as a community of practice and to simulate what students would experience through COIL. The start was followed up by smaller group workshops to prepare the faculty to manage competing academic calendars, instructional technologies, and student expectations, which is all important. And then the real work and fun began for both the professors and the students. And next slide, please. This is my last. So, and now um, before I hand it over to Martha and Dominique, we'll talk about the story of connecting them. Um, as UAlbany's CO coordinator and the SUNY lead on the UAS 7 Virtual Academy, I recruited Dr. Martha Aslan at the University at Albany, which is an HETS institution and, and also a, a Hispanic serving institution. Martha, who directs UAlbany Center for Leadership and Service, is also a pro professor who's quite experienced in leading study away to including to Puerto Rico and study abroad programming. And she was always ready to coil, just waiting for a partner like Dominique. So uh, Martha's information and interest, her idea was shared at Munich UAS 7. And soon a glorious partnership emerged with Dr. Dominique Hammer, um, an exciting adventure in virtual education and a transformative workshop in global leadership were set in motion. I was happy to join Martha and Dominique in a first of many meetings, which could not have gone better. Um, like Martha, Dominique wears many hats at his institution as, as he shares, including serving as their internationalization lead in business administration. Dominique and Martha shared, have shared goals to sustain and equip their collective student community amid the global pandemic, which is still with us now, and this is the uplifting story that we are here to share with you today. This partnership has evolved beyond the classroom and colleagues into true friendship. As Martha says, we have fun doing the work that we do and the energy that we create is shared with and by our students. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Annette. So, as I mentioned, the University at Albany is, um, we are a research one university. We are part, we are one of 64 campuses within the whole State University of New York system. And as a research one institution, we are known for being an extremely diverse university, which is beautiful. And then um, being matched with Dominique's university gives us more diversity, which we will be addressing and talking about. Um, I just wanted to add to that, um, when the Center for Leadership and Service, we're fairly new to the University at Albany. We only just opened our doors in 2017 under the leadership of, at that time, our new starting president, Dr. Um, Avidan Rodriguez. And we matched our vision. And I wanted to share with you what our mission, mission statement is. Long and short, our goal is to build world-class 21st century leaders who are going to take us in inspiring ways to make this world a better place. So a lot of the teaching that I do through the Center for Leadership and Service, um, we do, and I should back up, credit-bearing courses. We have a leadership minor, which is an inclusive 
minor open to any major. So I do attract students who are from our uh, criminal justice, Homeland Security major, which gravitate very highly to this program. Um, students from the School of Education, where the courses that I teach really fall under. Um, but we also offer non-credit experiences. As Annette mentioned, we have done short-term study abroad experiences. We've been to Puerto Rico a couple of times, several times, to assist with um, putting roofs on homes um, around the Mayaguez area, which has been a beautiful experience for our students. Um, but one of the greatest things that I loved as an educator was being able to offer students global opportunities where we could physically go to another country and explore a, a social issue, whether it was from the UN global goals, taking one of those and focusing on it. But the pandemic changed everything for that. And we had to think outside the box. And I think as an educator, it challenged me also to think, how can I do things differently? But with the great love and care that Annette gives me, she boosts my confidence to say, let's try this. Let's try an online experience for you and match it up. So the course that I offer um, through the Center for Leadership and Service is one where I teach about leadership theories. And this one particular course, which seemed like a perfect match with what Dominique will be telling you about that he teaches, is all about understanding leadership theories through case studies. And we pick some amazing case studies to look at. The most popular case study that we've looked at is the 1996 Mount Everest disaster that took place. And to me, it's just, um, it's a great case study because not only are you looking at the leaders in that case study, but the followers and what the followers did. And if you know the story, it is about individuals that have to find the leadership within themselves to be able to save themselves and to be able to save others to get off of that mountain safely. And so you can look at, unfortunately, some mistakes that were made, but you can also look at some amazing stories about humans who found this inner strength to be able to survive that whole entire experience. And what we learned from it is very valuable. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity. So when Annette heard my story that, yes, I'd like to take this particular case where we're looking at leadership theory and applying it to current temp contemporary times, she's like, I'm on it. I think that would be great. And then she's my matchmaker. She's the one that introduced me to Dominique and it has been just a perfect match from there. Um, our program is very diverse. So at the University of Albany, I will have students that are living on campus as well as in our communities or um, sometimes even abroad have signed up. And then Dominique can talk to you about his institution being international as well. I just want to remind people that if you don't mind putting your uh, the mute on so that we can hear. So the learning that we have agreed and that we've set up is really team-based learning. It is all about getting individuals to work as a collective with a very, very diverse team. And I will tell you, I'm passionate about that because when I talk with employers about what are they looking for for new Albany students when they graduate, one of the first things they tell me is, has that student, can they demonstrate that they have worked with a, a team and not only just a team, but a very diverse team to accomplish a goal. And so our course does that. We put students into teams with the purpose that their final for my course is they will, and Dominic's too, they have to do a presentation as a collective. So we've divided, students, we've divided students up based on the Myers-Briggs. We picked that one assessment tool because, and it's showing us that it's working effectively. Ah, right, We've had students tell us that of all their experiences of being put in teams, this class has really gotten them the opportunity to have a successful team, to be challenged. They call it a very collaborative and effective team design. So I use the Myers-Briggs. I, I posted pictures that Dominique and I use for our class just to, so you can see. And the right picture shows you, I really, we put students into class based on the green, the yellow, the blue, and the orange. We want to make sure that we have a very diverse group of students that are half from U Albany, half from Dominique's institution, and making sure that um, we're covering the gamut of all aspects, all possibilities that you can see on the Myers-Briggs. So we use that and it's been highly, highly successful. So we're very proud of it. And then we want our students to get to know each other. So they're not just here for this class and for this experience, 
half of working effectively as a team is to respect, to know, and to really understand who the other leaders are on your team. And so here's some examples of how Dominique has um, introduced his students to the students at the University of Albany. Each one gets a chance to shout out about what they would like to share with a beautiful professional, it looks like LinkedIn type photographs of themselves. Um, and it's been so nice because we share that with the students before day one, before they ever even get to meet each other. So they already get to know um, the, the students in the classroom with them. I am gonna turn it over to Dominique, um, who's gonna tell a little bit more about the specifics. Thank you very much, Martha. Could you just switch back to the um, sure. the that chart one? Yes, um, th that makes it really obvious that we have a really international class um, in back in Munich already, since this class has been opened for a courses in English program, so that exchange foreign exchange students can take that course out of our bachelor's program. Um, Bachelor's of Arts program. Um, I've been running that course for like five years, so 10 semesters already. I was always thinking to myself, because I read in one of our textbooks that we use, and we are also trying to apply um, theories to, to practice. Um, there was one sentence, one quote in one of those textbooks that I couldn't get out of my head anymore. And the, the quote was, can you really teach leadership in a classroom? question mark and I, th I was thinking about it more and more and I was trying to to somehow enrich it and we, we faced hard times in the pandemic as you all did I guess around the world but it also has had a pro and the pro was definitely the introduction of that IVAC program to us so there was like in February, I guess it was in January or February 2020, there was the initiative and you could sign up for being a volunteer for the first program, for the first, yeah, for the first round. And this is how we met. And I thought to myself, that would be maybe a possible answer to that question in that textbook, that we could enrich it, um, make it even more international make it case study driven and let them experience leadership within a real, a real international pattern, a real international environment. And this is what took place. So these two students, um, Radina on the left, uh, Nico, Nikki on, on, on the right side, were students from my class of last semester. Nico, um, originally coming from um, San Luis Obispo, uh, Cal Poly, um, University in California, entered in Germany and landed in Albany. I guess he, he, he didn't have that on that radar. Uh, when he joined our university, uh, neither did Radina. And so students were in the first, um, in, in the first kickoff session a bit confused when I tried to somehow kick off the whole thing and make them prepared for the next lecture, which will be joined with you as student in a parallel session, in a live session online only. Um, that was kind of confusing to, to the students. And at the same time, it was of course challenging them. We had to make teams within just one session. And MBTI, as Martha announced, was a really suitable tool to find out more about personalities, which is all suitable to identify own abilities and characteristics of the personalities of each student. However, um, as Martha said, we then proceeded with a case study where we tried to apply um, different leadership theories that has been assigned to them, the joint teams, which was the next task to make some and build some joint teams and keeping in mind the two different time zones and all the complexity that occurs with that um, and, and make them apply theories to a real happening, to the 1996 disaster that happened at Everest. Um, and um, yeah, the story about it and also the application of the theories um, brought the quality of that course. 
but that's just part of and half of the storyline, I guess. Because the real answer to my first question that I had from that quote in the textbook came afterwards. Because, you know, we have different, different semester times, right? When Martha ends, we are in the middle of our semester. So when we start with the joint class, Albany is in the middle of their semester, we are at the beginning of our semester and we have to match that. So what we do is then the, the presentations that the teams are asked to perform at the end of the joint class are the end presentations at Albany and the intermediate presentations at Munich. So if you would now switch to the, to the next slide, Martha. Thank you. But what I then ask my students to do is to reflect on the second half, systemically reflect on what happened during the first half that joint sessions with um, the US students. Um, and surprisingly, what comes out is that they have now to reflect on the leadership that have been, um, yeah, processed during the sessions and during the group work. As you can see here, that's part of their final exam, their final exam paper that they have to uh, then submit on our side, uh, Munich. And they're of course talking about team building and leadership roles. Um, not like um, learned by heart out of the textbook, but experienced personally during their work. And you see all those stages, which, um, which you know out of the, out of the theory. And the difference is here that they really experience it. Um, and we also try to, to, to teach them that leadership has not to do that much with just leading others, but also with leading yourselves, right? And we also try to do that metaphorically with, with the hand. You can try that out, that works with you as well. If you want to lead, if you want to lead somebody, you need to lead yourself first. These are the three fingers pointing back to you. And this is exactly what the course is about. And you can see that in the next slide as well. Um, they're also talking about decision-making processes. Leading is making decisions, making decisions for yourself, but also for others, taking over the responsibility. As you can see here on the uh, lower left-hand um, corner, responsibility for own tasks, taking over responsibility and taking over initiative and bringing to a good end and try to perform at, at your best in order to, to keep up with your, um, um, with your group and also the expectations that you have. Um, on the upper right corner, you see that um, weak fact of communication, right? That has been stressed very often in quotes in theory, but that was real action and real life. Um, that communication was key during those, I guess it was seven or eight weeks um, participating within the joint classes um, that they, found out that they need to communicate, that they need to find a way in order to, um, to, to proceed towards the next week and towards the final presentation. Finally, um, that will be the next slide. Um, they also um, feedback uh, with regard to different cultures, which is worthwhile to consider because there is a certain difference, right? There's a difference in the university systems, in the educational systems, but also in the society compared from, US, um, from the USA and Germany. For example, uncertainty avoidance, um, power distance, and so on. And that was really amazing that they quoted Hofstede here, um, who is well known in terms of the cultural differences, but they applied it immediately to their group work that they have now experienced for the past eight weeks. And that's very, very rich in terms of um, the content and also the quality um, of their feedback finally. As Martha said, she has now 42 applicants. We started with uh, roughly 30, I guess. Yeah. So you improve it by one third, I guess. Um, the same on my side. I never received, I'm now professor since 2013. Um, I never received 
a more honest feedback like I did um, in, in that course, never before. Um, and that's the last slide from my side. Um, this is an original quote out of the um, out of the feedback paper. The next slide, um, and they said. It's, it's not just learning about leadership practices and theories by studying the Everest case. That is good. That's one half of the course. But I guess the, the, the more important half of the course is the second part of the quote, that they could experience the collaboration, the communication within their groups and the students with the University of Albany. And also, which was really good for me. And this is why the second semester, so the past one, was easier for us, Martha. I guess you, you had the same um, uh, impression, like the first yeah. one, because it's so relaxing to do that in, uh, in, a, um, in a group of two lecturers so that you can hand over, take over, um, for example, the input um, sequences at the beginning of the classes and also um, improve then the quality um, of the teaching. Overall, a great experience also for us. And that was really um, due to the pandemic because I otherwise wouldn't have signed up to the program, I guess. I would have tried to, to, to solve it myself. Um, and I'm really, really happy that I, that I did um, take the opportunity. We are now proceeding towards our third semester without any IVAC framework anymore, but of course the support of Annette and her team and also on our side, the international office and our team. Um, and yeah, this is, this is what we can learn out of it. The framework that needs to be shaped um, first and then make it happen and um, try to, to, um, to find a way to, to get along with the challenges like time zones, different media and so on but it's easier than you think <laughs> in in the beginning i guess handing back to to martha sure and dominic um i think we get to model if it's we because we've gotten more comfortable with our teaching style i think it models how easy it is for our students to be able to connect to and um it's just a rich experience. As an educator, I have learned so much through this process. And I will tell you, I feel like Dominique and Annette are family to me because we work so closely on this and we're so passionate about bringing such wonderful experiences for our students. And so this has just been an amazing journey to be on. Um, so part of what we do is also ask students to reflect. Great leaders spend a lot of time, um, sometimes going through the experience is also important, but more important to that is the reflection that you have on the experience. And so we asked some students for feedback and um, I think only one of the videos actually is working and I apologize, but you're gonna get to see one. Um, this is a student this year who's working in Washington, DC. He's a senior. And his last semester for U Albany, he's in Washington, D.C., doing global work, which is amazing. And here is his Hi, reflection. I'm Aiden Morgan. Science major, uh, global oh, leadership. Oh, at the both forefront. are playing now. Which I apologize. Hold on. So was my first opportunity being able to work with students from the country. Which is why I was so, so excited. That I apologize. Hold on a second. In leadership. I believe that it made this I got the other one to work. especially beneficial for everybody involved. And on top of that, both professors, our wonderful UAlbany professor and our German professor were so helpful and supportive, encouraging, which just made everything so easy. Thank you very much. I want to add that particular student had shared with me, he always would love to go on a study abroad experience. Funding would never permit that. So we have offered a brand new opportunity for him to be able to explore and experience a cultural leadership class that got him engaged with other individuals who he still keeps connected to his team. Um, other students in the class too, because they start up their own group me pages or WhatsApp and they talk to each other. And even through the time zone zip difference, they've made incredible friends. Um, so let me go back to 
my video here with Christian. Christian's the one that is in Washington, D.C. right now. He's committed to going into government, and he really brings forth a passion for the cultural leadership from which he learned. Uh, so as I'm letting you all know we're at the 10-minute mark. Okay, thank you. Not only from Germany, but from around the world, and to expand upon, you know, language and culture and communication skills that are necessary for emerging young leaders. So he's fabulous. Uh, we also get written feedback from students. And so I highlighted some of the things that really um, came clear um, from their writings, but how our style complements each other, which is really nice. I have learned volumes from Dominique and his own professional background of working in the military in the form of leadership that that also the training that he has received um, his own little love for mountain climbing makes it a beautiful um, example when we talk about the 1996 Mount Everest disaster and go full force into that whole dissecting the leadership that took place so here's just some more examples of feedback um, I value that and I think it's great. At the end of our session, all students there, um, we always encourage through leadership and through Dominique's business program to get involved, get on LinkedIn, get your professional photograph. Um, they look forward to receiving this certificate at the end of their program and they post it on LinkedIn. And it's just been another refreshing way that they market for us this opportunity for the class. And I give it credit for why the class is also expanding. So this was just an example of the certificate that was posted. We've had, we've been blessed. Oh my gosh, our presidents of our two institutions have come to our classes. So President Rodriguez, whose training and background in his dissertation was all about um, leadership in times of crisis, uh, was a huge resource to have this class meet and to talk about his own experience. And then we applied it even to what's happening with COVID. And the two presidents got to talk about how the two different institutions were handling an emergency of a pandemic. Uh, and so beautifully relates back to us talking about leadership and how e leadership evolves from individuals and from those that are highly trained as well, but from followership too. Um, and we've had some beautiful newsworthy postings, which is great. And so I think that's helping, helping with our popularity of this course. So, um, we're going to be introducing it again. It'll be our, we're, we currently just started two weeks ago, our spring semester here at the University of Albany. It'll be Dominique's summer session. And so in March, as I prepare my class now to get ready for our, our joint class together, we spend seven weeks together. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, it's just an amazing experience for all that's involved. And so I wanted to come to Hetz to be able to shout and sing about um, this wonderful opportunity and how from my end as an educator, it was so easy to happen when you have experts like Dominique and in that they're guiding me. Um, I wish I had done this sooner in my career um, because I think it opens up access for new opportunities for those that might not be able to participate in physically going abroad to an experience. Um, it definitely enhanced my own teaching style. And I've made great friendships with Dominique, who I look to forward. Someday we're going to meet face to face. It would be nice. Um, so we're opening it up now for any questions that anybody might have. I know there's some in the chat. That's, that's all me, pretty much. Oh, is it? OK. Looking for some new partners for Coriel <laughs> and UAS Seven. Uh, same, um, same for me, Martha. Like you, like you announced. Um, I, I wish I would have started it earlier, because it enriched the background and also the the, the, the friendship across the ocean. Um, and I'm sure that we will meet this year. So keep fingers crossed. We have now the announcement that there are funds from um, the the institution available. For um, for an exchange for lecturers, um, that would be great. Um, but initially, that course is now it started with um, a first a first semester. It's been now uh, going forward to the third semester, um, and it's it's fixed. So students are requ requiring they are expecting. Um, now that they collaborate with a US institution because of word of mouth on our campus um, made its job. So they are approaching me in emails 
if I sign up to this course, is it assured that we'll cooperate with the US students? Yes, it is. Um, please go ahead. So the word of mouth is good. Um, the quality is good. Um, the marks are good. Um, but the workload is very high. This is what, <laughs> what we also need to pay attention to. The workload is very high. and We do not make a secret out of that. They really need to engage. Um, but if they do, they have a great chance to make outstanding experiences and also then have the, the possibility for a very good mark at the end. Any questions to us? Recommendations, maybe, or own experiences? Okay, we have one here in our classroom. Let me just change the camera over here. What would be the question? Hi, first of all, uh, first of all uh, my name is, uh, I'm President Rodriguez. I'm the president of the University of Albany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to congratulate Martha and Dominique and the entire group for such an excellent work and a, and a great program that they have developed. This is what establishing and strengthening and developing global relationships should be about meaningful global relationships and this program exemplifies this in terms of the so congratulations to both and hi martha i know you're surprised <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of in terms of the question how what would you say have been the challenges and the opportunities presented by covid this pandemic to really strengthen this this type of program I can talk about that. Um, early on, the very first time we offered it, not all of our students necessarily had internet. Act. Like we had to figure out ways to be able to get everybody the resources that they needed to be able to participate in this course. And, and we did it. Some students to this day cannot turn on their cameras because they don't have enough uh, like bandwidth to be able to have the camera on, the microphone on. Um, um, most do have cell phones and I'll give you that. And I do have some students that join our class to this day through their cell phones. And so um, we use at UAlbany Blackboard. Blackboard has been a gift for me with the UAlbany students. It's a nice way to communicate and to be able to connect with them. Um, but globally, that has been a little bit of a challenge. Um, at first, the time zone difference, like we told a story about the very first semester we did it when the United States, uh, when New York turns our, our clocks back, that doesn't happen in Germany. And we forgot to talk to each other about that. So like we're waiting for the German students to join us and for Dominique. And then we didn't realize that it's an hour later over there. So they're gonna be joining us an hour late. And we just have to make, so we learn. We learn as we're going through it. Um, and again, the accessibility for students, I'm so proud of this. I see a difference when I take students on global experiences, whether it's a service project or whether it's studying abroad, they come back with their mind wide open. They have experienced something. I wish I took that opportunity when I was their age. Everybody deserves an opportunity to have a global experience. And so for those that might not be able to afford being able to travel and physically go to another country, we have offered something that is so accessible and yet still fulfilling and giving that same cultural and rich experience that I get when I bring students abroad. So to me, it's been life rewarding and that's been great. Dominique, I don't know if you want to add more to that. Just a, just a single thing, uh, President Rodriguez, you might remember the joint session that we had with our Vice President uh, Sonia Munz. And when we also stated, and you did, um, due to your experiences in the past of crisis situations, that structure matters a lot. And students um, realize that this is really true. That's not just a theoretical um, content. This is really pr uh, of practical use, that they need to have a structure. They need to have a, a structure of their proceedings, of the meetings, um, towards a common goal. And that helped a lot. And as soon as we guided them a little bit and coached them on, on establishing a structure that works, no matter how, but a, a structure for their belonging teams, um, that somehow made a difference, I guess, from our side, because our class had 
up to 12 different nationalities, mainly in Europe, but also outside Europe. So the time zones that Martha uh, mentioned were not just two, but more than five different time zones coming from Asia to the Middle East, to Europe and to the US. <laughs> and this is why I say structure matters a lot. Um, that was also a learning also um, uh, within that joint lecture that we had when you were taking uh, part um, out of your statements. Yeah. That's what I learned too, again. And I wanna add something too, and it was so intriguing for me that it happened. So the time zone difference, it's um, usually like late breakfast, early lunch in the US for our students. And again, it's fully online. So students are told, please, it's three hours that we're together once a week. You're permitted to bring your food, your beverages, you're online, go, go right ahead. And then it's dinner hour for the students in Germany. And so when Dominique and I go in and out of that, when we put them into their teams and we spend the first hour all together as a collective group, and then they get to work with their teams and we go in and out of rooms. One room I went in, they were talking about, what are you eating? And, and you know, what is that prepared with? And so they're, we're talking about culture when it comes to food. Um, it was just really nice to see that it's more than just talking about this one case study, but how it's broad. It's, it's life around you as well. And you're getting to mingle with these individuals. And we're introducing new friends to them that's offering a nice perspective of a global understanding. So, and I will say too, we've had students, Spanish speaking students from, oh my gosh, lots of countries between you, Albany and between your institution, Dominique, we've had a nice array of students um, from many different lines. And that was my biggest fear actually, that I would not be able to communicate with students in the class or with my co-team teachers, Dominique, but um, having English be the spoken language makes life so easy at my end, so. Thank you, and I'm happy to see that you're there, Dr. Rodriguez, thank you. You've been a big supporter of this program and, and I love that, so thank you. Anybody else, any other questions? Okay, we have another one here, go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Carmen Sevillanes Lago. I'm the executive director of the Association of Private Colleges and Universities of Puerto Rico. So thank you very much for the presentation. I was just wondering if you would kindly expand a little bit on the utilization of the Myers Briggs. And Dominique, thank you. <laughs> Dominique, you want to take that? I'll take the question. Um, I'm not sure whether I understood correctly. You were um, question, you were asking why we took that Myers Briggs no, no, type if indicator. You expand, if you could expand a little bit, if you could expand a little on the utilization of the Myers Briggs. Yes. Oh, okay. On the utilization. <laughs> um, yeah, mainly, mainly we we just took it as a tool to to build up the teams and to make them heterogeneous to enhance creativity, but also to give them the opportunity to meet a different personality within the teams and to, to, to overcome maybe some challenges and hurdles that come out of those different, different uh, personalities. For example, introverted versus extroverted persons or feel types versus thinking types, judging types. Um, so what we what, what I do at my end, and I guess Martha, you do the same on your end. What we do is um, we do a lecture of around sixty to ninety minutes, where I introduce the Myers Briggs type indicator, where it came from, also the um, psychological background, and how the test was then, um, um, yeah, produced to one of the, I guess, largest, largest scale test in the world that is used um, millions of, of, of times a year around the world. And we then give the students the opportunity to find out more about their own personalities. Um, and the good thing is that it's rather more a, it's not a test that you can fail. It is um, a, a, a typology where you find out about your type and there is no bad and no good types, but there is 16 different types 
which makes it good um, from the very first beginning on that people understand that my personality that I have is good. It might be different compared to another one, um, but I now gain the understanding of my own personality and I somehow understand a lot about the others because I know about their personalities and I make them interact with each other to talk about their personality types and whether a third person might perhaps think of the MBTI type that I might have just because of the observation. And that brings students close together. Um, and and in, a, in a second step, you can use that um, as, um, as the indicator for then building the groups <laughs> professionally. Um, and that's good. That's really good. Um, one bad thing is um, that we do not have the funds to have the overall rollout of a MBTI test, which would be worth, I guess it was 75 to 80 euros, which is um, 65 to $70 a test per student. And we do not have the funds for that. But um, what we have is, and this is what Martha showed on her slide, um, that there is a shortcut of that testing. And if you know a lot about the, the background, um, if you introduce that, if you talk about the dichotomies, there are four different dichotomies like extroverted, introverted, judging and feeling and so on. Um, I, I guess you can overcome that, um, that problem um, from the full version to a just lighter version. Um, with the academic background that we can deliver. Yeah. Is that going into the direction of your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I just want to yeah. add to that too. Um, so students that are in this leadership minor are taking several different assessments. And so the MBTI isn't, it has challenges. It's just one of Carl Jung's, um, we use Carl Jung's theory in this assessment. So these students have taken, by the time we get into this course and this time with Dominique's class, our students have taken multiple different assessments and they understand that it's the collective and their interpretation of all those, um, those tools about leadership development, personality understanding that helps them understand who they are as a leader and what their strengths are that they bring forth to any situation to include, and most importantly, working with a very diverse group of other Team, teammates and what are the gifts that they bring to that team in order to be highly effective and to make change. Um, so yes, I love Myers-Briggs, but yet I also know that there's major concerns with Myers-Briggs, but we use it just to place them into their teams. And that has been such a successful uh, tool for us to be able to use. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a few minutes left to fill out the evaluation. So any last questions before we conclude this meeting, either in the chat or here? We're all clear? All right. So I'm gonna put on the chat the link so they can do an evaluation for our current uh, presentation. Make sure to click on the right uh, classroom and um, time zone and here we have it our qr code they will pass it around so you can scan it thank you so much doctors for all of this presentation i have learned so much as a student also and i think everyone can say it was very enriching the knowledge that you all brought here thank you for having us Thank you very much for the for the opportunity.
I will conclude recording this session. Thank you so much. You can stay on the line if you want, but we'll be preparing for our next session at 12 o'clock. Again, thank you.